Good morning. I get asked all the time, which magnesium supplement is best? My name is Dr. Robert Groisman from covidinstitute.org. And today we'll be talking about uh, different types of magnesium supplements. Why take magnesium? Mit mitochondria need it for oxidative phosphorylation, which is the energy production part of uh, what mitochondria do. It's pretty important for nerve function, for muscle function, for blood glucose control. Glycolysis is dependent on magnesium and protein synthesis. And glycolysis, by the way, is the breaking down of gly glycogen into glucose. How to take magnesium. You can't just take elemental magnesium because it's not well absorbed you need to attach it to something, a transporting substance. It's what's called chelation. Uh, you're chelating it and creating a salt uh, with an amino acid or a mineral. Regular doses of elemental magnesium, you need between 30 and 420 milligrams per day or about 350 milligrams per day of elemental magnesium, okay? What formulation you take determines um, how much elemental magnesium you're actually getting. Certain forms um, or excessive doses can cause mild symptoms like diarrhea or upset stomach. Um, you can reduce the upset if you take a meal or take it with a meal. Calcium, magnesium, and vitamin D are all linked to magnesium. It's best to take magnesium with calcium because high magnesium can decrease calcium levels. Without enough magnesium, calcium and vitamin D absorption will be impacted. Calcium... Without enough magnesium, calcium and vitamin D absorption could be impacted. Calcium and magnesium have a very close relationship with regard to metabolism. If you're going to take it, uh, magnesium and calcium together, you should take it in the ratio of 3 to 1 or 2 to 1, magnesium to calcium. Magnesium is essential to the metabolism of vitamin D. No magnesium, no vitamin D absorption and metabolism. Taking high doses of D can deplete magnesium. So it's important that you keep all these in mind um, as you take them. Magnesium supplements are generally considered safe for most people, even in high doses. That's assuming you have no impairment of your kidneys. Your kidneys are working normally. Once you reach adequate, adequate levels, um, your body will excrete any excess of magnesium in your urine. If you, start, if you are starting to see some toxicity, you can see nausea and vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, loss of reflexes, uh, arrhythmias, low blood pressure, bradycardia, uh, drowsiness, or confusion. Now, the muscle weakness um, and... The loss of reflexes uh, can be a sign of additional toxicity of magnesium. You can see um, even respiratory and cardiac arrest if the level gets too high. Not all magnesium forms are alike. There's so many different forms. Which magnesium form is the best to take? In general, magnesium, malate, and glyconate are the best in general, overall when you consider everything. So what do these forms differ in? Gastrointestinal effects. Some can upset your stomach. Some can relieve constipation and diarrhea. Some are used as GI preps before colonoscopies, uh, such as magnesium citrate, for instance. Uh, their effect on the magnesium blood levels depends on what you're taking. The chelation agent effects. The, what you're adding into the magnesium salt breaks off and has an effect of its own. How much elemental magnesium you're getting per milligram of um, the form that you're taking and the bioavailability, uh, which is um, what you administer is what actually makes it into the systemic circulation. And lastly is cost. 
So let's talk about some of the forms. Um, magnesium ascorbate um, has about 6.4% bioavailability. So relatively low. What is ascorbate? It is vitamin C. So if you're taking magnesium ascorbate, um, you're essentially taking magnesium elemental plus some vitamin C, and it's fairly easy on your stomach. Um, the next one is magnesium aspartate. Now that's an amino acid. It's uh, well absorbed orally, and uh, it has a fairly high bioavailability, and it's soluble in water, which means you can mix it into, into drinks, and this will increase your magnesium levels. Next, we have magnesium carbonate um, used for gastrointestinal sim symptom relief. Now, if you let the carbonate fizz, so basically it's, it's carbonated. It's like carbonated. Um, so when you put it into uh, water or another liquid, it will uh, form bubbles. If you let it sit there and uh, get all the carbon dioxide out, uh, it will become magnesium citrate. And magnesium citrate uh, comes in digestion uh, and it can cause uh, some diarrhea. Uh, in fact, magnesium citrate is used for a bowel prep. Uh, magnesium chloride, also well, uh, well absorbed orally. It will increase your magnesium. It can be used topically too, and it's used in creams or lotions. Magnesium citrate, as I said, it has 16% bioavailability. It is over the counter. It's um, well absorbed, number three out of the, the top three. And it is a natural laxative, so be careful if you're going to use magnesium citrate. This is what's used for colon preps. It is affordable. Um, it has some use in migraine prevention and may help reduce PMS. Um, this one is called magnesium glyconate. It's also an amino acid, 14.1% bioavailability. It's easily absorbed orally. It dissolves in water. It's very safe. It can help with things like uh, insomnia, anxiety, stress, and it's least likely to cause digestive stress out of the formulations. It may help with leaky gut. and neurological health. Hydroxide, magnesium hydroxide. It's great for an upset stomach, constipation. It really won't raise magnesium. It's basically milk of magnesia. It's the stuff you, you would take um, for upset stomach. Lactate, magnesium lactate. It's well absorbed. It's gentle on your gastrointestinal system. It also has a use as a preservative and it will increase your magnesium levels. Uh, magnesium L threonate, it's an amino acid, 8.3% bioavailability, easily absorbed orally. It's great for brain benefits, such as memory loss or depression. And it's one of the few that crosses the blood brain barrier, very important. Many of the other ones will not. So it's great for things like memory loss, depression, and it will increase the magnesium in your brain. Magnesium malate, uh, this has a less of a laxative effect. It's absorbed orally well, it's number two out of three. Um, I think this is one of the best overall. It has great mitochondrial support. That's the malate part. It's used for fibromyalgia, energy, um, and muscle pain. Magnesium orotate, this one is non-laxative, but it is easily absorbed. It's more expensive though. It's popular among athletes for increased energy, um, improved heart and blood vessels. It has mitochondria support and it has microbiome support. That's the orotate. Orotate part helps with the pyrimidine, pyrimidine uh, synthesis such as cytosine, thymine, and uracil. Magnesium oxide has 60% bioavailability. It's pretty, it's pretty uh, bioavailable. However, it's poorly absorbed. Um, that's, a, that's essentially your antacid. Um, your Maalox, your Mylanta, uh, those type. And it's great for heartburn, indigestion, constipation. Not so great 
for um, magnesium increase in your blood, but it could still do it if you take enough of it. Magnesium phosphate, good bioavailability. It will add phosphorus. That's what the phosphate is. So it helps with energy, fatigue, and bone health. Magnesium stearate. This is water insoluble. It will not dissolve in water or liquids. Um, it does have a laxative effect. It can irritate your mucus lining, so probably not one of the best ones to take. Um, it will slow absorption of medications, and it probably is not the best for gastroparesis because of that. Um, the stearate is also used as, as an anti-caking agent, prevents things from sticking together. Magnesium sulfate. Now, this one is very popular among uh, OBGYNs. It's used intravenously to help slow down uh, labor. It can be applied to the skin, but because it has an unple unpleasant taste, it's typically not used um, orally. It is the main substance, magnesium sulfate, that's used in Epsom salts. It helps with sore muscles. Magnesium taurate, that's also an amino acid, 8.9% bioavailability. This may help control blood sugar, and that's because of the taurate. It also is good for uh, cardiac health and mitochondrial support. It's fairly easy on your digestive system, and it helps with anxiety and depression. Thank you. I hope this clears up some of the confusion about which magnesium form to choose. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and like this video.